So now I come to um, emissions from food production. So here are the ag agricultural sources, all three greenhouse gases. Um, that's today's fire map. All of those huge expansions of fire are fires intentionally set for agriculture with a massive amount of carbon dioxide and black carbon soot, the two number one globing heating emissions. We're burning up the planet, right? We need a big educational program, right? To um, educate the people um, who don't know any better, but they, they, literally they don't know any better, to educate the people into that you don't have to burn down the land in order to do agriculture, uh, particularly if you're doing regenerative agriculture. You, you want that wood, you want that stuff, right? Now look at China, you know? Australia, in the heat wave, fires breaking out all over. Um, if you look right up north, right up to the top of the map, in Siberia, you'll see a lot of rather big fires. That's the boreal forest burning. That's a potential very big source of carbon feedback emissions. So that's very bad. So the climate emergency is getting recognized. Oh, great. Um, uh, London, UK. When London, UK declares a climate emergency, I think we're getting there. Climate mobilization, go to the website. They have a long list now of uh, munip municipalities in the world who have declared the climate emergency and have started a climate emergency program or a climate emergency department or climate emergency commissioner, okay? Oh, that's a shame. I promised to give you the list of American cities. Um, I forgot, I'm sorry. This is, I've referred to this in passing, we cannot safeguard the planet without peace and disarmament. It's impossible. Um, uh, uh, so we roll in to the best golden age of renewable age possible. We roll in, it has to be the peace and disarmament age. We have to stop these idiot, crazy leaders. I mean, like, like, they're worse than children. Far worse. Crazy. So this is very nice. This, this is a, uh, um, a little conference that the University of Victoria, where I'm from, had. Look at... <laughs> oh, God. $1.7 trillion a year being spent on armaments. And we have our leaders saying, we'd like to deal with climate change, but you know, it's so expensive, we can't afford it. They're lying through their teeth in the first place because all the recent studies, including by the World Bank, show, of course, that mitigating stopping climate change is a huge profit. When you rebuild the world for renewable energy, that's a huge economic profit, right? and um, uh, uh, world total employment as well. Um, United States, of course, still in the lead. $600 billion a year. Oh my God. So we come now to what can we do about the global emergency. Um, number one, uh, work with your municipal governments, right? Um, they're totally ready. Uh, Vancouver and Victoria, where I'm from, have already agreed that they're going to have an emergency resolution and they're going to put an emergency climate action plan. Here's the University of Illinois um, that did it some years ago and uh, a climate change action plan. But it, they're all emergency plans now. So what can we do? Conversion, conversion, conversion. Um, uh, so I have to start with a quote from uh, Pope Benedict in 2012 in which he said, what we need is ecological conversion. Right on, Pope. <laughs> Number one, talk about it and write about it. Break through this psychological denial, right? Uh, that it's uncomfortable, that we can't just think about it. Come on, people. This is the biggest thing our species has ever faced. I think our species has been around for over a million years. Homo erectus, we've been here a long, long time. 
I mean, we have survived and prevailed over all kinds of things. We can beat this thing. Energetically support the IPCC with their 1.5 degree C limit. Um, uh, I was over in, um, I was invited to give a um, panel presentation at um, um, uh, The Hague um, uh, International Criminal Court a month ago. And um, I, I did The Hague Court and then they put on a, um, a, a public group. It was wonderful. It was packed with young people. It was a huge place. It was absolutely packed. And um, uh, so they really did inspire me. And so uh, at the end I said, look, arm yourself with this science. Arm yourself with this science and go forward and you beat your leaders, right? So that's what we got to do. We got to wage peace. Wage peace. It's got to come in fashion again. And be kind and go vegan. We got to veganize the planet is what we've got to do and it's on the way. It's on the way. Uh, reinvest. Make good money. I'm proof. I'm not an incredibly wealthy guy, um, uh, but over the years I've uh, put all my savings and investments, all of them, into renewable energy. Hey, they're, they're making money very well. <laughs> you know, feels good. Uh, and tell this to the pension funds. This is ridiculous. Pension funds, write to them, say, hey, um, reinvest. And the big banks, reinvest. Tell them, tell them, tell them. Um, demand that your government stop subsidizing fossil fuels. You tell your governments this is the worst crime ever. Your legacy will stink. Tell them. Now, the three R's are still fundamental in dealing with climate change. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Be a local. Enjoy staying close to home. A lot, of, a lot of people are doing these things, and, and a lot of young people, which is very encouraging. Um, use your legs, particularly old guys like me. Walk, keep walking. You heard about this yesterday. Um, uh, and um, uh, public transport, you know. We need a lot more public transport. It makes our cities way better. Um, I, the EGU is at Vienna. Vienna is a beautiful city. Um, they have a great public transport system. It's dirt cheap. There's hardly any traffic in Vienna. <laughs> you can wander all over the place. It's great. Um, final one. Earth pride. Earth pride. Uh, do this and feel proud of yourself and feel proud of yourself for the earth. Uh, I think earth pride is a nice idea. Um, a friend of mine in the States, um, we were talking about it. And remember to support your indigenous people, to support your native people. And in Canada, like in the United States, those people are in the forefront. They know, they get this. Intuitively they know. It's in their heart and in their bones. They know how wrong this is. And they're out there doing their utmost to stop the insanity. Um, South Pacific Islands, of course. Um, sea level rise, we've seen this already. It's accelerating. Um, this is a terrible, terrible crime. Huh? These people have lived it there for ages. They don't want to leave. They love their life. We love tropical islands and we fly there, right? It's even worse underwater. Sorry? It's even worse underwater. The Correct. Good point. Uh, that's right. That's right. And they get these uh, much worse storms. Um, because of climate change, um, uh, which is damaging their beaches and, and their agriculture, it's making it very difficult for them to um, uh, get their provisions by boat. Um, uh, climate change is really uh, hammering these people. This month in Indonesia, massive evacuations. Thousands of people forced to evacuate their homes after heavy rain triggered devastating floods and landslides. Look at that. This is happening frequently, all over the world. Um, the thing also about heavy storms and floods, um, it's the other cause of a land degradation and loss of topsoil. It's not just wind um, and drought, it's uh, floods as well, you lose topsoil. We can't afford to lose any more topsoil, we know that. There's the ice sheets, just a reminder. Reminder. Reminder, 
Okay, this is the big one. Our leaders, and uh, you may have got the impression I'm not very impressed by them, um, our leaders have, con have condemned us, have condemned us to a three degree C warming by 2100, which after 2100 will continue and it'll be at least five degrees C. So um, this one here is a calculation by Climate Action Tracker backed by climate experts. What they do is a great service. They work out um, at least two or three times a year what the best, um, best um, national emissions targets would lead us to. And it's three degrees C by 2100. Um, at three degrees C, we have known for years all crops in all major food producing regions are declined they will have declined below today's baseline level. That's three degrees C. They got the nerve, the nerve to actually, you know, have this published. Oh, um, anything over two degrees C is runaway anyway. That's the combined national emissions targets. Three degrees, it's gonna be higher with feedbacks. That doesn't include feedbacks, so it's worse. Now, um, unfortunately, um, the early models on uh, crop yields were, were naive and they gave uh, people in the Northern Hemisphere, particularly the United States, the impression that the United States could weather um, global climate change and even benefit. Um, that's not true. The United States is highly vulnerable to climate change and that's really bad because of, I mentioned, time's up, okay. The United States is vulnerable to global climate change is a perfect place for me to finish. Thanks so much for coming out. Thanks so much for listening to this terrible truth. <laughs> <laughs>